Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're talking changing speed in HitFilm 4 Express. Roll the intro. As we can see I've got two clips here in the timeline. They're very simple. One is, they're both of the, pretty much me doing the same thing, just running my hand under a tap of water. It's pretty simple. The only difference between these two clips is that this one was shot at 50 frames per second and this was shot at 25 frames per second. This will be key as we'll see later. So obviously just start by drag putting in dropping in your video. When we first drop the video in our timeline it just plays back pretty smoothly, pretty normal. But there are two ways of changing the time and the speed of your clip in HitFilm 4 Express. There's the rate stretch tool, which is a new feature added in HitFilm 4 Express, and there's the speed effect, which has been around for a while and is sort of dull and boring. But it does have its uses, and I will get to that later. The easiest to understand is the rate stretch tool. In our editor, we have loads of tools. You'll probably start off on the selection tool. We've got the drag tool, etc., all these tools. And at the bottom, we have the new rate stretch tool. I was so excited when this came out. Um, because it's so great it's finally here. So if I just zoom out and I use the rate stretch tool just to drag the video out, we'll see that uh, automatically it slows the video down for us. I'm just going to give it a second here to uh, let it load and uh, when we play it back we can see it plays back not smoothly but it plays back very very slowly and we can see the individual frame frames as the water comes down. So that's pretty much how you basically change the speed. I can also even speed this up. Um, that's actually quite fast. I'm just going to extend this. Okay, so pretty much it'll speed it up or slow it down or whatever according to how you drag it. It's pretty easy to understand the rate stretch tool. Now we're going to take a look at comparisons between 50 frames per second and 25 frames per second. But let me first show you this diagram. As you can see, one second is spanned across uh, the length of this uh, image here, and we've got 50 frames in between the middle. When we have a video that's 25 frames per second, we have half as many frames. This results in more jerky movement. 25 frames per second is perfectly smooth, and that's, you know, television in Europe and Great Britain, and that's the standard for a lot of countries. However, if we have 50 frames per second, it will appear much smoother. One of the advantages of shooting at a higher frame rate is then when you slow down we can space apart these frames and we can get something that is as smooth as 25 frames per second but slowed down half times. When we slow something down that's 25 frames per second uh, we get it played back at 12 and a half or something frames per second and it gets jerky and we don't really perceive it as smooth motion anymore. If we shot something at a 100% frames per second and we slowed it down to 25 frames per second then we'd be able to get 4 times slow motion and, it's, and it would still look pretty darn smooth. So this, that's the advantage of using higher frame rates. As we can see this is a comparison between 50 frames per second slow down at half speed and 25 frames per second slow down at half speed. You can see the difference can't you? So not only is there the rate stretch tool, I also mentioned the speed tool. So let's go back to this diagram again. If we just take the 25 frames per second, and uh, let's just zoom in here to a couple of frames, and we can see that as we stretch the video out, then we sort of lose frames and it becomes more jittery. The frames play back as a slower rate. That's what I just explained. But what the rate stretch tool does is very really simple. It just stretches it out. What the speed tool does is it adds an extra little step in there. When you use the speed tool, it stretches everything out and to compensate for those missing frames, it adds in frames in between. This way we still get smooth motion, but at lower frame rates. When you slow down something that's 25 frames per second to half speed with the rate stretch tool, it'll look pretty jerky. But when you use the speed tool, it'll actually look pretty smooth. So how does it make it look smooth? and How, What frames does it add in? Well, the frame in the middle 
is just a 50% dissolve between the frame on the left of it and the frame on the right of it. I'm just going to show you how we can use the speed effect to our advantage here. So I'm just going to drop this 25 frames per second video into this timeline. I'm going to change the timeline to 25 frames per second. And uh, as we can see, when we stretch it out, then it becomes pretty jerky. This is what I showed you before. Not really bad, but still noticeable. So let me undo that. So now I'm going to apply the speed effect. Go into your effects tab, and under temporal folder, or you can just search it up, drag the speed effect straight onto your video. You should get it popping up pretty much straight away. If we change the speed to something like 2, then it will play back twice as fast. And the rest of the video will be blank, which is a bit of a shame. But when we slow it down to 0.5, it doesn't extend the video, so we only get half of the video, but we do get these frames added in between. As we can see, this is a real frame that I was that was shot properly, like it's an actual real live frame. This is not a live frame, and it's blur between this frame and this frame. So this way it looks really smooth, even though it's not actual real movement, because frames like this just added it in in post, whereas this and this were real frames. This can be really useful when you're slowing down something with a lower frame rate. However, you can't go really ham on this, because if we slow something down to say 0.2, or maybe just even go to 0.1, just to show you guys in this video, it's really easy to see the transitions. Or if we slow it down to 0.1, it becomes really easy to see the transitions between the frames. So whether you use the rate stretch tool, the speed tool, whatever you do, I hope this video helped you guys. Um, if you enjoyed it, if you did like it, please leave a like and comment, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!